Hello and welcome. Today I'll demonstrate how to make a very basic and simple air dry clay owl using these products and um, tools that I'm showing you here. I'm using DOS air dry clay. I'm using a small yogurt jar as the base of the owl and I'm using tin foil that I'll scrunch up to form his head. This is a rather intuitive process um, when using tin foil. You just have to kind of keep working it till you feel like the shape is right. I'm making an almost heart-shaped ball <laughs> um, because I want the two rounded areas that are coming off the top to um, be his ears. And now I'll make a rope that will go around um, the neck area so um, it's the, the body and head together is more of a column than two, than two actual sections. I use hot glue to adhere the tin foil to the jar. And this is what I mean about kind of filling that gap to make um, the owl be more of overall a column shape. In the divots that you'll encounter when using um, air or sorry a tin foil, sometimes what I like to do is actually use the glue to fill those divots versus filling them with either more tin foil or with clay. It's just a fast, um, efficient, and inexpensive way to fill some of those divots. The next step will be to um, apply the clay and the smoother the um, substrate is to begin with, the less smoothing you have to do. Of course, there's always some smoothing, but um, that's why I'm filling the divots. I hope that makes sense. Okay, I'm happy with that basic shape. So now I will get out my ball of clay. Like I said, this is DOS clay. Um, before rolling out clay, you should always um, 
work it a bit to condition the clay and to get any air bubbles out. It's less prone to cracking if you work, um, work it before you roll it out and use it. I added a little bit of water to this clay. It was feeling a little bit dry to me. Um, sometimes I add water. Sometimes I add a, a little bit of Vaseline. Sometimes both. You'll get to know um, the feel of the clay and what consistency and, um, I guess, dampness works best for you. I did decide to put a little Vaseline on um, some saran wrap. Um, and this is kind of a trick I do sometimes. Again, when the clay feels like it, it's a little dry or it needs a little conditioning to me, um, I, I put um, Vaseline right onto some pl plastic wrap. And then I'll form my patty of clay um, and put it inside like a book, <laughs> um, and get it ready for rolling. And I'll roll, roll it out with a rolling pin that I have that has guides on it. Um, I believe I'm rolling this out at, I want to say, a quarter of an inch. But again, you, you'll decide, you, you'll get to know um, how, um, how, shallow or or deep you like to work with the clay of course the thicker the clay is um, the more product you use and the longer it takes to dry but I, I tend to use um, maybe a little more clay than some people but I, it's just my preference so I have one uh, sheet of of clay rolled out here and it's feeling really good to me, so I didn't feel like I needed to get the tin foil or the glass wet. It's it's clinging real nice, so I wrapped it around. It didn't quite make it, but I know I need to trim some of the, some off the top, which I do, and then I'll take that piece and um, add it on to the the bottom where the clay didn't meet. Any leftover clay you have, you should put back into some plastic so it doesn't dry out. It dries out relatively quickly, so you want to keep it moist. And now begins um, just manipulating and working your clay um, around your armature until you're happy with it. And this, this can take co quite a while. Um, your, be your best tools will be your hands. Okay, and I find also that the back of a plastic spoon works really well for me also. So you'll kind of see my tricks here. Um, like I said, my hands do much of the work um, to get it up to this point versus using a bunch of other tools. And water, water, you know, helps you smooth it. And it's, it's imperative to use water to smooth with air dry clay. Water is definitely your friend in in um, in this working in this medium. I just, I'm speeding it up so you don't have to see, watch this, watch everything um, so slow, but 
you can see that I use kind of the ball, I think that's what it's called, the ball of my hand a lot. Um, like that for smoothing. And the thing about working with air dry clay is um, you may have to remind yourself to slow down and enjoy it because if you really think about it, um, we're, we do these things, we, we create an art f for the purpose of enjoyment, right? We, we could go to a store and buy an owl, but we're doing it because we're doing it with our own hands to enjoy it. So just take your time. So here you see I'm using a textured mat that's for clay or, or different kinds of um, soft products like this. And I just happened to have this um, here and I decided to just create a little bit of texture. Um, you see I'm just kind of pressing it um, into the clay randomly and not worrying about it. Had I had a bigger sheet of text, uh, a texture mat and rolled it all out as I manipulated it, obviously we would have lost we would have lost a lot of that texture. That's why I'm, I'm doing it after I have the basic shape already done. And you still are going to have to be doing some manipulating um, with the other features of the owl. But you just don't stress if some of the texture gets worn away. You can just press some back in, into it. Again, just enjoy it and, and, you know, don't ever get too stressed about anything that you're doing with air dry clay. Anything can be fixed. Anything can be changed um, from the beginning to, to the end, really. Um, so just don't get stressed. Just enjoy this. So now I'm going to get out these little bitty, I guess I'll call them cookie cutters, but um, they're very miniature, in some shapes that I'm going to use for um, further components for the owl. And I brought out my little tub of slip, which is just clay um, that's mixed with water. And after a certain amount of time, you know, if you put it in a tub and you, you know, smash it together and um, stir it and, and things over the course of the, a day or two it'll turn into a paste which we call slip and we use it as glue um, we use it for smoothing we use it for filling cracks so it's something you'll use often so you have to create a tub of slip for yourself I'm using a mini roller here to roll out some clay um, for the components that, that I mentioned. I'll be making his beak, um, his eyes, his wings, and his feet. So I'm using um, the other half of that same textured mat, rolling some texture into this clay, and then I'm going to use a large, larger um, kind of teardrop shape, and this will be his wings. Again, cover up any clay that you're not going to be using right away so it doesn't um, start to dry out. So the body of the owl is still pretty wet. The clay is still pretty wet. So I shouldn't have too much trouble at this point adhering my wings to the body. Um, if it was starting to dry, it's more important at that point to be um, scoring um, and getting it wet and using the slip. And you'll see that as as I start to add more components, I'll be focusing a little bit more on that because the body is starting to dry out. But still at this point, um, the body is still quite wet. I am going to add some slip to the wing, as you see me doing here, and to the body. And I'll adhere it this way. And 
and I'm just going to go ahead and put them both on in the same manner. But then I am going to take a tool to join the pieces of clay together a little bit, and you'll see what I mean in just a second. First, I'm using a small um, paintbrush with some slip on it. And I keep this paintbrush wet with water also. So I'm just kind of creating a little river of glue there. <laughs> So you can clarify that texture as you go. And if you notice that your clay on the body of your owl is starting to, you know, get too dry where you, you can't do that anymore, just, just spray it with some water or rub some water on, on it and it will start to soften up again. I bought a continuous spray um, water bottle. Um, and I love it. <laughs> I think there were two for maybe less than $10 from Amazon. And it just comes out in a really nice mist um, versus just a harsh spray that you have to keep spraying. You just pump it once in a nice, um, long, um, soft mist of water comes out. It's really, really good to have one of those for air dry clay. So now I'm going to work on his eyes. And his beak. Oh, I wasn't sure which size beak I was going to use, so I had both sizes with me of the teardrop. Um, and you can buy these little cookie cutters, you know, at any craft store or, you know, online. They're, they're not expensive. I just have the basic shapes. So I decided on the smaller of the two teardrops. 
and I'm going to use the larger of the um, teardrop for his feet. So over the course of the last five minutes or so, I could tell that the um, body of the owl was starting to get a little bit drier. So I'm going to have to put a little more effort into um, joining these pieces of clay together than I did um, with the wings. The wings actually um, adhered quite nicely. I didn't have to do a whole lot. But here I'm scoring um, where the eye patches will go. Adding a little water, a little slip. And then just press them firmly into place. And now I'm using a tool to kind of pull a little bit of the clay from the eye patch down right onto the body to bridge that, that little seam there. So that's what I mean when I when I say I have to work a little harder at this point because there's a, there's a bit of a drying issue. But it's always better to invest a little more time than less time in adhering your um, clay pieces together. The other thing I'll mention at this point is once this is dry and once you have, you know, your owl assembled, you'll let it dry overnight. It Depending on the clay, it could take up to two days to dry. So just, you can keep that in mind, um, that after it's dry, you can actually sand it. So don't be too freaked out if you see little, you know, uh, little areas that are sticking out or where it's a little bit frayed or uh, sharp, sharp edges. Um, it can be sanded, which is so great. <laughs> um, you could make it very smooth. You can spend a lot of time sanding, actually. Um, of course, having on his body this texture, um, you know, we don't want to sand too much on his body and lose all the texture. But on the other hand, we probably wouldn't have to do as much sanding because the texture... Um, is camouflaging a lot of the dense and let's call them imperfections. So um, texture actually helps a lot in that regard. I, I hope that makes sense, the way I described that. Okay, so his his eyes are on, well, now and now I'm going to use the side of a tool to create some um, little rays. I don't know what the right word is, but, you know, owls have those. Um little rays <laughs> around their eyes. This is obviously a very stylized owl. So, you know, you could include any of these details or exclude that, you know, you don't have to do any of these things. Um, or if you have other ideas, just, just go for it. This is just a guideline for doing a very simple you know, owl. As a matter of fact, I will mention, I'm going to be adding little feet onto this owl, but um, if you want to omit the feet, he really doesn't need need the feet. Um, that, that The feet are probably going to end up being the most fragile part of this piece because they're kind of sticking out. Um, if anything's going to break off, it's going to be the feet. So, you know, 
like I said, in a minute when I put the feet on. If you want to omit the feet, just do it. Um, this is a fun tool, too, this ball-ended tool. I have it in several sizes, and I use that tool quite a bit for things. Um, I'm going to put his little pupil in, and this is also a ball tool. It's just a very tiny ball at the end. Um, and if you're starting out, just starting out with air dry clay, you can you can use tools that you just find at home. I mean, knives, forks, <laughs> spoons. Um, you know, you don't have to go buy all these things right away. You know, I, eventually, you know, if you're really digging into this medium, you know, naturally you'll probably want to buy some more toys. But um, a lot of this stuff, like like I said before, your main thing is your your hands are your main. Um, most important tools here. So I just attached his beak the same way I did his eye patches. And then now his little feeties. And then he will be done, and he will need to dry um, overnight. Um, the, the clay will turn white when it's dry, okay? Um, and I, I put him on a little um, me a metal mesh so while he's drying, so um, it can dry from underneath as well. Otherwise, what happens is underneath the feet, you know, will take much longer to dry. And I want it to dry evenly. I also don't want it to dry really fast. Um, some clays are um, prone to cracking and drying too fast can exacerbate that problem. Das clay, I have found, is very um, uh, dependable when it comes to um, no cracking. Every once in a while, I might get a little crack, and it's very easy to fix, but I have used some clays that are terrible for cracking, and it's so um, discouraging when you spend all this time making uh, your project, and then you, you know, the next day you find it full of cracks, or it just falls apart. I mean, that's no fun, right? You put all this time into it, so um, there are other clays that, you know, people swear by. I mean, I'm just a DOS girl, although I've tried, recently tried Jovi, and I really like that for um, animals. Um, but DOS is what I, what I think is a really good all-purpose, my go-to clay. So I'm going to set him on here and let him dry overnight, and tomorrow we'll paint him. Okay, so he's dry. He's all white. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sand his toes a little bit, sand a couple areas that are sharp or um, not, not as smooth as I'd like them to be. So nice that, you know, we can use sandpaper. If you're doing a major sanding, um, try to do it outside or somehow, you know, wear a mask or somehow vent it or, you know... A, you shouldn't be breathing in all this, um, all that dust, although I'm just doing really minor sanding on this owl. And then once you have sanded it to your satisfaction, um, then you'd take a damp um, paper towel or a damp rag and wipe off the, the dust. And then the next step after that is is um, painting. Okay, so I'm going to now put a coat of gesso on this owl. 
So gesso is a type of primer um, that just kind of gives you a nice ba uh, base for your paint. Um, it also provides a little bit of tooth um, um, and it's, ju it's just a, probably a good uh, practice um, before painting. I don't always prime or use gesso, but I'm I'm just trying to more and more just because I think I'm a professional painter, so I, I kind of know all the shortcuts and things. But I think, like I said, I think it's a good practice to do um to do this step. Um it's the same as pr priming something. Basically it it's a primer, okay? So you have a really even um consistency and uh, consistency, I guess, before you start painting. Okay. So anyway, so now I have my gesso on, it's all dry and I'm going to use some very basic colors here. I have a dark turquoise, a light turquoise, yellow, white, and black. Um, I'm using a small angled brush and well, while I don't think you have to have the best brushes in the world, I don't because I'm really hard on my brushes. I go through lots of brushes, but it I think it is important to ha to know um, what brushes work best for you. And f for this type of painting, deep detail painting, I like an angled brush. So if you look at the bristles, um, I think I'll point it out here shortly. Um, there's an angle to them. Um, ending in a point and I pull the point and that's how I get my details. Okay, it's 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 along the same lines as a sash brush or an angled brush when you are painting in your house and you're cutting in like at the ceiling line. You use most people use an angled brush instead of a you know a square top brush. Okay, so um when I do this here, I, I, I could get a little bit of that blue onto his body to fill that um, gap there or that little seam there. Because we don't want, if you, if you paint too short, you'll have a white line in between there. And we don't want that. So um, I paint a little tiny bit onto his body. And then when I come back with the body color, which will be the light blue, um, then I'll cover that up, okay? So that's called overpainting. But you just want to do it very minimally. You just want to overpaint very minimally just so there's no white lines between the two colors when you're done. Um, also, these are craft paints. They're not very high-quality paints. And, you know, I actually prefer craft paints when I'm doing craft-type work um, because the paint is... Um, isn't, isn't as thick as professional grade paints. I don't want it to be thick because I don't want to see all the brush marks. I do recognize that I'm probably going to have to put a couple coats on, um, but that's okay. I would rather have it thinned out and easy to work with in these small details. So craft paints are perfect for this. You don't have to have um, artist grade or professional grade paints for this by any means. And I have all that stuff. I have all of the professional grade paints and all the fancy supplies because that's what I do for a, for a living. But when it comes to this, I prefer the craft paints. So I'm employing the same technique here. I have an angled brush and I'm pulling the tip to get to control my brush to get those edges. And each of the paint colors that I'm painting here is going to have to take, is going to um, require um, two coats. But then once both of those coats are dry, I'm going to show you how to, how to dry brush, um, which covers a multitude of sins. <laughs> so even after two coats, you could put a third coat on, but even after two coats, if, if there's if it's a little bit streaky, dry brushing or any number of other 
manipulations of paint, whether you're using a glaze um, or, or whatever. Um, um, ca camouflage is any of that. And uh, you'll, you'll see what I mean when I, when I show you about dry brushing, okay? So this is just the first coat, but once it dries, and I, and I often use a hair dryer to push it dry so I can get the second coat on right away. Okay. You see what I mean? Those little feet are, you know, that's the weakest point on this bird. So if you, if you didn't even want to put the feet on, it's just as cute without the feet. But look at those cute little toes. <laughs> Even though I've already primed it, and actually those toes I've already painted, if there's a little area that's bothering you, go ahead and sand it. There's no rules. This is art. You just, you know, make things work. Yellow is kind of an, a difficult col color to paint with. It, it doesn't cover very well. Um, red is the same, and sometimes blue is that way too, but yellow is yellow and orange um, are very difficult um, to get good coverage. And if you've ever tried to paint your walls yellow, any shade of yellow <laughs> or red, or together, they're obviously orange. Um, you'll know what I mean. It's just a lot of pigment. Now I'm cutting back in. I'm going over that line that, that I was telling you about with the darker blue. And I'm using an angled brush to pull the point and to cut back in over that. See? And this just takes practice. Everything about this whole process is, you know, gets better with practice as any anything in life, right? We get better as we practice. Every single time I, I do something, um, do an air dry clay piece or pa paint a mural or, you know, do anything in my work, I learn something every single time, and I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> um, we continue to learn, and we continue to get better as we practice. So, um, you know, if this is your first project or one of your first projects, don't be hard on yourself, okay? Just have fun with this. This You have the rest of your life to, you know, keep getting better and um, keep expanding you know your repertoire and your um the complexity of your projects or not you could always just keep them simple just the main thing is that you enjoy it right if you're doing this on your weekends when you're not working or whatever you don't want it to be stressful you want it to be fun and enjoyable and for you right so remind yourself of that as often as you need to. He's starting to come together. One other thing I'll mention about um, the gesso and the paint and everything that you do, um, you add to the owl um, beyond the beyond the clay helps to strengthen it. Okay, so um, if there there is a little gap between, let's say, the wing and the body, and there's a tiny little gap there, um, and you put the gesso on, a lot of times it fills that gap, and it strengthens that. 
spot. So everything you do to it helps to strengthen it. So we'll be putting two coats of paint on um, and then we're going to dry brush. And then at the very end, I chose to put a, a, a clear coat over the top in semi-gloss. All of those things combined um, make it a pretty strong little fella. So every application you put on the feet, for example, are going to make the feet a little bit stronger. Think of it almost as glue. So I'm using kind of a middle-sized um, br brush here, but I'm going to set it down and I'm going to get a small liner brush, a really tiny detail brush to get that area between the eyes and the beak. I just know I'd make a mess of it if I used too large of a brush. So no, I have a first coat on everything. And once it dries, I'm going to put a second coat on. So now the second coat is dry and I'm gonna show you how to do some dry brushing. So I like to use a square brush for this. Um, and I'm just gonna use some white. I took most of it off um, and I rubbed it onto a paper towel. And I'm just gonna literally dry brush around the edge of the eye pads. I don't know what they're called. Eye pads. They're not the eyeballs. It's kind of that patch of feathers that goes around, radiates ar ar out around his eye. So that everything that's yellow there is actually three things. It's his feathers and his eyeball and his pupil. And I'm dry brushing his beak. This is just straight white. And um, you'll start to feel how much paint um, you need on your brush so you can control it. If there's too much paint on your brush and you try to do this, um, you just don't have much control. So the, actually the less paint, the better until you, you know, or get a feel for it, okay? Next, I'm moving up to um, a larger brush, and I'm going to dip into that light blue that his body is done with, and I'm actually going to dry brush his wings with that color.
Isn't that so fun? You can really see the pattern of the texture pop out when you do dry brushing. I'm, I'm concentrating more in the middle of his brush. As, I'm sorry. I'm concentrating more on the middle of his wing, as you can see. And I'll do the same thing when I do the body. So now I'm mixing white. Oh, you can't really see it, but it's white mixed with the blue. Okay, so I'm making kind of a baby blue color. Here you go. Now you can see it. Um, for the dry brushing on the body. Okay. start to dry brush his body. Again, I concentrate more most of my effort into the larger expanses um, and I stay away from the edges um, where let's say where the um, body meets the wing because in theory this is this is getting kind of deep here but in theory that would be in shadow anyway so it would stay a little darker okay so um yeah concentrate um more in the open areas <laughs> the wide open field <laughs> um if that makes sense it also is very pleasing to the eye to have um those bigger areas a little bit lighter it just is very soft feeling. So we're almost done here. Um, I'm just going to finish up dry brushing, and then I'll put a clear coat over the top, and I'll put a black spot in his eye. I use the bottom, uh, the bottom end of a paintbrush dipped in black paint to, to drop that in, and I didn't film that, but it, it was um, as simple as that. Um, and then once the paint is all dry, um, like I said, I put a clear coat of semi-gloss, uh, a water-based sealant over the top. And that just having that little bit of um, gloss just gives it a really nice, rich feel. Um, and then the video will be done, and you can have at it and try your own owl. But I did want to ask you um, your opinion on when I, when I do these videos, do you prefer that I narrate them like this or do you prefer I um you know um would you prefer to read it you know that I type it in and have music playing I'm just trying to get a handle on what you know what you would prefer so if you could let me know that in the comments I'd appreciate that and if there's anything you'd like to learn or um, any projects you'd like me to um, demonstrate, that would be really good to know. Like I said, just have fun with it, okay? That's what it's all about. And there you have it. Thank you so much for watching.